Hi, good afternoon. My name is Nishikawa、uh, Kazumi、uh, from Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry of Japan, METI, METI.、Uh, I'm very honored to contribute the, this interesting symposium sessions、uh, to explain the, what is going on in Japan with regard to the、uh, well aging society or the super aged societies. Uh, I will make the 20 minutes、uh, presentation via online. So, using my presentation,、uh, PowerPoint slides. So, I will forward. The first issue is the health and the economy.、Uh, for uh, COVID 19,、um, remind many people the important correlation between the healthcare and the economy. However, the, even before the COVID 19, in super aged societies or the In 100 years old life societies, the healthcare and the economy have strong relationships and coalition, and we should be very careful、uh, to think about it. So, next page, just a moment. Yes,、uh, if you see the、uh, entire world, the, you can see the definition of the life expectancy and healthy life expectancy. The, in 20th centuries, The people is focusing on the、uh, people was focusing on the life expectancy only, but in 21st century, when we are about to realize 100 years of life, healthy life expectancy really matters.、Uh, Japan and many other countries, including the UK,、uh, is a good score、uh, with regard to the life expectancy and healthy life expectancy so far. However, the, we can observe gap between the two. So how to、uh, fill the gap? Is then you know, important global issues. Then,、uh, when we see the、uh, elderly rate、uh, all over the world,、uh, currently Japan, Japanese elderly rate exceeds 27% and world number one.、Uh, this number will up to 40% uh, in 2060, uh, nearly 40%. So, continuously world number one. OECD countries, Europe, UK, Uh, these countries are already aged society or the super aged society, so and this elderly late, these elderly late will、uh, continuously rising up、uh, to the 25% or the 30%、uh, throughout the first half of the 21st century. But if you see the、uh, right hand chart, the, you can see the many emerging Asian countries elderly late. The China,、uh, uh, Korea, Singapore, Thailand, Uh, these countries' elderly rate、uh, will rapidly increase and will、uh, be more than the 30% in 2030s and 2040s.、Uh, in, in short, the aging issue is not only developed countries or the OECD countries' issues, but also the emerging Asian, emerging economies' issues as well. So it's global issues. So, what does it mean that I called super aged societies? When we see the Japanese case, the, in、uh, 20th century or the 19th century, 18th centuries, elderly was very rare. The elderly late,、uh, someone the, exceeding the 65 years old and more,、uh, was only a few percent of the entire societies.、Uh, but in 21st century model, Which、uh, where the you know, elderly over 65 is a main component of the society, it's a kind of the 40% of the、uh, entire population demography. So, this trend, the transformation from the 19th century model to the 21st century model,、uh, in the sense of the demography, is a reality of super age societies and 21st century challenge and opportunity.、Uh, you can easily、uh, understand why it is a challenge. Of course, many economists say that、uh, you know, elderly rate, if elderly rate exceeds, the consumption, production、uh, will decrease and social expenditure、uh, will increase. So, therefore, it will provide stress to the societies.、Uh, but on the other hand,、uh, opportunity is these things. The, you know, the、uh, flip side of this demography change is.、Uh, Very good fact that one can live up to 90 years old or 100 years old, old life. 
So therefore, the, this is very good things for individuals. So our challenge and opportunity is then how to fill the gap between the uh, pessimistic view from economists and very good uh, view from the individuals. That this is then uh, core of the opportunities. Uh, if we do nothing, that maybe the pessimistic view will prevail. However, if we do uh, some initiatives, investment, uh, R&D technologies, uh, innovations, right now, then we may create the better supervised societies to fill the gap. Uh, fortunately, the Japan can lead this demographic, demographic transition uh, first in the world. So that many other countries uh, will follow same kind of a transformation from 19th century model and 21st century model. Then Japan and other aging countries can together uh, to nurture new innovation, new, new solutions, and new industries, new market uh, to realize supervised society. This is an opportunity. Just a moment, sorry. Mm. The Japanese, uh, not only Japanese Ministry of Health, but also Japanese Economic Ministry, like my ministry, and the uh, cabinet office uh, is very keen to realize sustainable growth uh, by encouraging uh, elderly working and social participation uh, by not only women, but also the many elderly, grandpa and grandma. And actually, the, uh, if we see the statistics, that we have good uh, outcome so far. Uh, in short, the elderly is becoming younger and younger. The uh, Ministry of Education uh, may, of Japan uh, made their uh, research, and they said the elderly is becoming younger and younger in physical terms uh, by five years in last 40 years and by 10 years last, last 20 years. Actually, the Japanese population is decreasing uh, in last 10 years. The, uh, however, the working population is increasing. Uh, not only uh, female participation, but also elderly participation is leading the uh, growing working number of the population. Uh, interestingly, the you know, job or the work is very good for the individual healthcare status. Uh, if you see the, these kind of charts, the working people uh, will may, can maintain a uh, health, more healthier status compared to the non-working people, especially in the elderly. Uh, in short, uh, in Japan, the uh, from not only from a healthcare policy perspective, but also macroeconomic perspectives, we would like to realize the uh, brighter supervised society where elderly can be energetic, elderly can be healthier, elderly can be work, uh, can work if they want. So therefore, the, uh, uh, more people can support the society, uh, more elderly can support the society not supported by societies. So how to create uh, this thing is a big challenge and opportunities for us. Uh, I will explain the same kind of thing in the diff from the different point of view. The, uh, in order to realize su brighter supervised societies, the, uh, in order to create energetic, healthier uh, elderly, what kind of uh, solutions we have to uh, en en we have to en en emphasize? Prevention, life support type healthcare system. This is one of our uh, challenges. Uh, also, COVID nineteen uh, provides you know the uh, very difficult situation right now, uh, but uh, uh, we may overcome COVID nineteen in you know months or at least you know the one year or something. Uh, by creating the vaccine or the drugs. Uh, however, if you see this chart, the uh, diseases with single target agents like the communicative, communicative diseases can be overcome or that can, uh, could be overcome 
uh, by the you know, drug discovery and medical treatment. So therefore, uh, in ordinary communicative diseases, the, uh, we, uh, we have the good drugs and medical treatment uh, method. However, on the other hand, the aging-related di diseases like the dementia or the lifestyle-related diseases uh, like the diabetes, uh, uh, type 2 diabetes, uh, we may not have the uh, you know the good drugs or the uh, you know the or drug only cannot uh, cure lifestyle related diseases so therefore the, uh, you know the from green if we s compare the green one and uh, you know blue one and orange one the different uh, treatment different solution is necessary I exaggerate a little bit, but uh, uh, I dare to explain these things. The green one, the, uh, to respond to the diseases with single target agents, like the communicative diseases, the treatment plan is very simple. The uh, two uh, objectives is a permanent cure. And uh, standard treatment for everyone is necessary. Therefore, the drug discoveries or regulatory science is uh, very important uh, to, for key key for the success but on the other hand the blue one the, and the uh, orange one uh, think about aging aging cannot be cured and aging related diseases like the dementia uh, cannot be permanently cured so therefore the, our approach is um, early diagnosis and disease progression control and life support life support means then um, eventually live with diseases the live with aging uh, so therefore, the solution is different, not only drug, but also uh, lifestyle uh, solutions is necessary. Same as uh, true for the lifestyle related diseases like the diabetes. The early diagnosis, prevention, behavior change is a key for the success. So therefore, the, we encourage the importance of prevention, uh, uh, prediction, prevention, Personalization, participation, people medicine is very important to improve quality of life in 100 years of life. Not only primary prevention, secondary prevention, surgery prevention is a very important issue uh, for society to uh, tackle with. Uh, Dr. Akiyama, uh, uh, professor of the University of Tokyo, uh, created this chart. Uh, Japanese females from 60 to the 90 years old and how the, the trajectory of the QOL is uh, written if you see the red one the, uh, if you are if one is healthy at 65 uh, she can maintain relatively high QOL up to the 90 years old however uh, if one is not healthy at 65 unfortunately then in general uh, she may more likely on the bed. So therefore, in 100 years of life, uh, rather than the 70 years of life, uh, we should be very careful the, to maintain healthcare status at 65, which means that before becoming elderly, that one have to be very careful about one's healthcare status um, to balance between the you know jobs or the working style and one's healthcare or the lifestyle lifestyle is really key, especially the uh, many uh, com many countries the working situation or the occupational health uh, should be more encouraged uh, in hundred years of life compared to the seventy years of life. Uh, Dr. Akiyama write down different uh, chart uh, for Japanese male. The, based on her analysis, the one tenth of the Japanese uh, men uh, can continuously maintain very high level green uh, green line, very high level QOL up to 90 years old. The, this super glamper uh, is not the you know the uh, daily uh, gym commuters, but the key for success is uh, social participation. The one uh, who have some role and who are connected with societies uh, will uh, more, be more likely 
uh, follow this green line. So therefore, the, uh, after the uh, one once you know the one get uh, retired or one get you know become elderly, the uh, he or she had better be socially connected. The the reason why I said that you know working or the jobs uh, is good for uh, one's health is the social participation. The by making jobs, by making the by continuously working, that one can easily be connected with the society. So therefore, the, uh, it will provide a good impact to the uh, one's uh, healthcare status as well. So in Japan, the, uh, of course, you know, the Ministry of Health and medical doctors is a very core, very important to uh, maintain the uh, healthcare status of the Japanese people. But in addition to that, uh, my ministries and industries, uh, many uh, occupational peoples or the communities are very keen uh, to improve prevention, uh, life support type healthcare systems by encouraging occupational health more and more and uh, community uh, activities or the social participation. And of course, the digital or the technology uh, will make these kind of things uh, easier to do. Uh, I will explain several uh, examples in Japan a little bit unique uh, for occupational health first. Health and productivity management. In UK or in Europe, in many OECD countries, the, you know, the occupational health is a mandatory. A somewhat you know, legal obligation uh, is uh, existing. So therefore the CEO or the company have to take care of their elderly safe and healthness uh, by uh, taking care of some things. Uh, however, so therefore the from uh, management uh, side or the CEO side, the occupational health has been cost, has been obligation. Uh, but in Japan, the, what we are doing is then actually occupational health, especially the uh, healthcare investment uh, to employee is good investment for company or the CEO or the management side as well. Because then that by increasing healthcare status of the employees, employees can be energetic, can, employees can be uh, more, you know, the, uh, committing to the, uh, co committing to the uh, uh, companies and employees can be, uh, can reduce the uh, uh, list of the absenteeism or the presenteeism. So by providing uh, investment to the healthcare, uh, individual healthcare status, the company can improve their profit. So therefore, the, uh, it's a kind of the R&D investment. It's kind of the, you know, educational investment. Why don't you invest to the healthcare status of the employees uh, so that the company can be more profitable? Uh, this kind of uh, management strategy uh, we encouraged in Japan, uh, we have encouraged in Japan last seven years. This works very well uh, because the two uh, uh, example, the one is then uh, from macroeconomic side, the uh, working loss. Uh, this is a U.S. Chamber of Commerce uh, calculated the working loss uh, percent or GDP percent uh, due to the poor occupational health. You know, Japan, U.S., you know, many countries, uh, you know, 5%, 7%, 8% uh, working loss we observe. So from macro point of view, that by making uh, employees healthier and healthier, the uh, we will, we will, uh, you know, uh, avoid this kind of macro loss uh, as a whole society, and of course, uh, in, as individual companies, then I pick up Johnson Johnson because then they have done this uh, health and productivity management in last seventy or seventy five years old, years old, and they said one dollar investment uh, will generate uh, is generating three dollar or three point five dollars return uh, to the a company. Currently, the, uh, not only uh, several companies, but also many uh, uh, large companies, SMEs, in inclusive way, that we are encouraging the H and PM in Japan. Uh, roughly, you know, the more than a thousand 
uh, listed companies and uh, more than the 5,000 uh, SMEs are uh, certified and qualified as H and PM good companies. And outside of that, the uh, more than 50,000 uh, organizations are employing H and PM. So this is a kind of the social movement in Japan. And uh, these movement will generate good things for employees and good things for companies and good things for the society as well. Uh, next topic is then you know, dementia. Uh, just as I said, the the you know the as for the dementia, there might be uh, there we cannot observe perfect uh, drugs or the treatment to cure the dementia. Of course, then drug discovery of the dementia is very important, but uh, not only drug discovery, but also uh, with non-drug discovery type solutions, we have to. Uh, tackle with the dementia because then in Japan that we already have uh, you know four or the five million uh, dementia people this number will uh, rise to the seven million or the nine million in 2025 and 2035 respectively so therefore the uh, Japanese uh, government create minister council and public private council to tackle with the dementia uh, two things why is then you know to live with dementia, uh, how to make uh, dementia people, MCI people comfortably uh, live even with dementia or MCI by introducing more industry participation or more technology solutions. And second is then uh, prevention or the uh, disease progression control. Uh, of course, the good drugs, some drugs are uh, uh, developed being developed but in addition to that some uh, kind of intervention a lifestyle change healthier lifestyle for one's brain uh, can mm, 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 control may control the uh, uh, progression of that uh, you know MCI or the dementia uh, so the mm, in Japan uh, we are creating private public partnership to tackle with you know how to live with dementia and how to uh, make a uh, disease control a uh, disease progression control uh, you can see many new technologies uh, to uh, support uh, such kind of things the why is that extra with us this is an AI application to the uh, easy com easier communication with the dementia or the MCI people they utilize AI and uh, imaging sensors uh, mics, cameras uh, to help the uh, people to more easily communicate with dementia or MCI people. Uh, some, you know, electronic companies are creating uh, universal sound design, uh, easier, uh, smart, how can I say that, uh, smart, uh, smart sound uh, to the uh, MCI or the dementia people. That once uh, mm, cognitive declined, that one can very difficult uh, to canceling noise uh, and uh, to under, under simultaneously understanding the meaning. So therefore, that this uh, gadget can cancel the noise uh, from gadget side. So therefore, the only clear uh, message can be transferred to the uh, elderly. Uh, so therefore, the easier listening is assured. Dementia friendly design. The, this is then uh, originally from you know the UK uh, or the European countries. Uh, uh, Medieval and the Tokyo Land Corporation. Some Japanese uh, developers are creating uh, dementia friendly design in, in the home, uh, in elderly care home or the hospitals uh, to uh, to provide uh, friendly uh, dementia friendly. Uh, living situations. Uh, not only the you know the uh, current H and PM or the dementia PPP, but also we are trying to create the middle or longer term strategies and the middle or longer term private public uh, research and development project uh, toward two zero four zeros. The last year, the Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry and the Ministry of Health jointly created. Uh, future innovation working group. Uh, this shows uh, what will happen in 2040s 
in Japan, in Tokyo, in rural area of Japan. Uh, in Tokyo, in short, that we can observe, we, we may have many, so many elderly uh, in Tokyo. So therefore, the, without doing nothing, maybe the elderly care home or the hospitals uh, cannot provide enough, you know, the, uh, enough uh, support to such kind of many elderly in Tokyo. On the other hand, in rural areas, the absolute number of the elderly will decrease. So therefore, the, without doing nothing, uh, the many hospitals or elderly care home will go bankrupt. So they cannot provide the uh, good solutions to the elderly in rural areas. So therefore, the, we have to change our uh, healthcare uh, provider systems uh, by transferring it from institutional model to the networking model. And also, we have to uh, encourage more research and development uh, to nurture the new innovation. For example, far smarter online medicine uh, using not only this kind of cameras, but also more you know, smells or senses. Uh, lots of information can be easily transferred to the doctors and patients. Uh, by we have to provide more, you know, technologies in the robotics, or the sensors, or networkings, everything. So therefore, the um, Ministry of Health, which are responsible for the national um, in medical systems, and my ministries, uh, which are relatively good for the technology or the industrial participation, uh, will jointly uh, create this kind of, you know, the future vision. And based on this vision, uh, we are making a research and development project and innovation project as well. Uh, COVID-19 uh, provides lots of uh, implication to the what is going on in the aging societies. Uh, in Japan, uh, so far, uh, you know, the, uh, many, how can I say, the digital application is necessary, and also the masks, uh, ventilators, uh, or the PPEs, this short supply, a supply chain of the medical uh, materials are globally uh, focused. And also the COVID-19 is changing lifestyle, work style of the every uh, aspect of the peoples. Uh, not only, you know, the uh, work style means the entire work and the lifestyle means then uh, more, how can I say that, uh, remote uh, services uh, is uh, expanding all over the world. So we not this is very earlier time for us to uh, define the uh, impact of the COVID-19, but we will continue the exchange. Uh, we have we had better continue exchange the impact of the COVID-19 throughout this year. And with COVID-19, after COVID-19, uh, we will provide a new healthcare solutions. Uh, we will consider new uh, societies with new. Uh, economic so, socio-economic solutions as well. A final message uh, that what I think and what we think important is the new collaborations beyond sectors and boundaries uh, to create better innovation for supervisor societies. This means that medical doctors usually have good relations with the pharmaceutical companies and elderly care home really likes the volunteers uh, based on in their communities. This uh, collaboration it is, of course, traditionally important, and uh, we would like to, we have to encourage more. However, in addition to that, the uh, collaboration with uh, medical doctors and IT companies, elderly care home, uh, foreign uh, AI uh, startups, these you know, traditionally not collaborated people had better, uh, you know, be in the same situation share the same issues and challenges to create new consortium to talk, to generate new solutions. This is a really key uh, to for the success. Uh, therefore, in Japan, the last summer, uh, we create Healthcare Innovation Hub, uh, which is uh, kind of the network of network. The, uh, so far, the 130 uh, many organizations from academics, uh, investors, uh, venture capitals, big businesses, SMEs, and local governments, foreign governments, foreign institutions are gathering 
uh, to the Healthcare Innovation Hub to generate the uh, new collaborations. And if you see the, uh, if you are interested in, please go to our uh, homepage, Healthcare Innovation Hub, GOJP, uh, to, you can easily join uh, this uh, online platform uh, to uh, share uh, your uh, vision, to share the, your issues and to find out your partners. Uh, it's free. Uh, the only thing is the um, strong intention to make new collaboration. It's not mandatory things. And also, the physically, the, uh, we have started the Well Aging Society Summit. It's a global summit to make a face-to-face -face discussion, face-to-face -face collaboration uh, beyond boundaries. Uh, we will, we are planning third World Aging Society Summit, October 12th and 30th. Preferably, we would like to create, we would like to make a face-to-face -face meetings there. You, uh, if you are interested in, please uh, come to uh, this email address, Venture Healthcare, Medi GOJP. Um, and uh, uh, of course, we are considering COVID-19 situations, so therefore the online option uh, is being considered. But anyway, the face-to-face uh, -face or the online, the, we are very keen uh, to provide uh, many opportunities uh, for various sectors, various boundaries, people to gather and to create new collaboration. And I think uh, this online session uh, uh, is a kind of the same kind of, you know, the uh, uh, collaborate uh, initiatives to generate new collaboration. In this regard, I'm very happy to uh, speak here. Uh, maybe I had a better end uh, here. And thank you for listening. Thanks a lot. Yeah.